Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Speculative Speculations. I'm Varsha. I'm Steve. I'm Jared. Dan. And I'm Chris. And this is a sci-fi podcast where we talk about sci-fi stories in all their forms. Today we're going to be talking about chapter two of Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. Annihilation is the first book in the Southern Reach trilogy by Jeff Vandermeer. And the chapter is entitled Integration, which is interesting because the short story that we're going to be discussing today, 72 Letters by Ted Chang from the collection Stories of Your Life and Others <laughs> uh, by Ted Chang is um, also dealing with the concept of integration, though not quite in the same way as the uh, chapter from Annihilation is. And although Chris would dearly like for at least one of them to be about areas under curves, Neither of them is, which is really unfortunate. <laughs> so, <laughs> chapter two. I definitely think the second story would have been much improved by uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, get ahead of myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's saying something. Um, all right, so chapter two. I thought, so we got some personal glimpses of our narrator in this one. I think we talked a little bit last week about how she felt cold and distant. We got some. Um, backstory about her personal life, which I don't know if it improved or added to the cold and distantness <laughs> that we felt from her overall. And then I think the tower just got a whole lot more terrifying. <laughs> what were your guys' thoughts? <laughs> I love this book. <laughs> yeah, I remember such yeah. a good time. Um, <laughs> I do. I do wonder because of the spores. I do wonder if if. Um, if these spores have given her the ability to not be influenced or if it's or if something else is at play here because mm. can't really we don't know if she, what she's witnessing is really what's happening right and and that's the thing she's so sure that she's seeing things that the um, surveyor has been hypnotized to not see but for all we know she might be hallucinating <laughs> and the surveyor yeah. seeing what's there but the clue we have, I suppose, is that the psychologist uh, hypnotized them to continue thinking that the tower is made of stony materials, which um, seems to be a hint that maybe our biologist is saying really what's there. And the photographs might have solved our problem one way or the other, but they came out blurry. <laughs> Very convenient. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, and 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 she noticed that um, all their equipment was old. Uh, yeah, that, and yeah. that would of course that would of course include the the camera that they were trying to take photographs with, and uh, so that that just threw another little mystery in there. That um, I'm like, why is I, I I didn't understand why everything had to be old uh, in order. to Hmm. For, for them to take on this expedition uh so what is the reasoning behind that and uh, i don't know if there was a clue in the first chapter but um i couldn't remember anything that gave us an idea why that would be the case anybody have any theories about that i think in general the idea when something's older in previous films or otherwise this come up is because the lack of electronic circuitry is very much reduced mm. 30 years ago um mm. and the ability to to control something electronically is good. so if you think of guns for instance it'll all be mechanical parts rather than rather than have any sort of technology guided sighting or anything like that similarly for the camera which probably has some electronic circuitry in it but if it's an old style it'll just use a a lens but with no lighting if that makes sense so hence blurry or if it had some technology inside it then that could be another reason why it's blurry as well but that's that's classically why you use old equipment rather than anything that's up to date. yeah but i think she mentioned even like their uh like the boots and stuff like uh, there was mm. other stuff that was old too it wasn't just like uh mechanical equipment it was mm. practical stuff too i believe if i'm remembering correctly mm. I wonder if it's something to do, uh, I don't know if anyone knows the concept of low background steel, which is steel which was made before radiate, uh, like nuclear bombs st were invented. Okay. 
So steel that was made before is less contaminated, I guess, by the sort of global fallout of humans starting to use uh, nuclear bombs. So it's used in certain applications. Maybe it's something similar. It's like, oh, stuff before a certain event is not contaminated by something that happened. Mm. Hmm. Mm. I mean, I that's that's new to me. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> uh, Interesting. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying this is correct. I don't remember this part, why it is. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's explained at some point, but I don't remember what the reason is. So this is all still speculation. You're in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but it, it, it does seem like everything. Because we talked about the unreliable new year last week, but it, it, mm. it believes that sort of everything's unreliable here at the moment. Like we don't know if anybody is seeing that we have multiple perspectives and we still are unsure what's going to happen like the concept of time etc is another thing that may be completely unreliable um like literally everything that we're being told is like through the guise of somebody that we also find out has been influenced as the preconceptions before they came in as well you know as opposed to what we were told in the first uh chapter that they didn't have any preconceptions but with the advent of her husband haven't been there and returned and that whole troop haven't done a yeah. cancer we get an idea that actually she had formed some idea before she went in and therefore maybe sort of influenced in a different way maybe than others because of that yeah the unreliability comes in several forms i think because you don't know how unreliable she is to start with because of her reasons for coming here and her past history with her uh you know with her um with this actual expedition and you don't know how much the hypnosis may have played a part beforehand mm -hmm. and you don't know how much the spores might be playing a part in her mm -hmm. unreliable narration and so it comes at you from all sides and we're just like we're we, I'm like throwing my hands up and like guessing like okay what's really going on here and uh because like the, her the reaction of the surveyor doesn't always seem to click with what she's thinking yeah and yeah. it doesn't seem quite logical sometimes either what she's thinking or what the surveyor's reaction is and you just don't know which one's the not logical part of it and uh it's it's a trip <laughs> yeah it is yeah and we find out that the narrator thinks that the tower is probably a living breathing organism that that is the trippiest of everything we read in this chapter i think so um yeah what what do you think is is the survey seeing what's real or the the biologist <laughs> I, I don't think we know what the surveyor is really seeing we just see her responding to yeah any of the events that the narrator is telling us and they don't really they just say things like uh, if, if i'm remembering this right you see what i see don't you <laughs> mm. like the most unhelpful thing for the reader yeah. uh and they're going yeah <laughs> and you're like right well that doesn't help us as as to what you actually see in that case so like there's a there's actually not much uh communication between the surveyor and the biologist in any kind of real sense other than there's there's just suspicion uh, and because they're sort of together they kind of are tied to each other here alone rather than kind of having any other option and i think if the surveyor had another option she would have left the biologist a long time mm. ago mm. We also don't know how the surveyor has been influenced by the hip hypnosis. So she may be seeing it and just it may be happening and she just doesn't notice it or is closed to it, closed off to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She um yeah, I think I think what can we be certain about at this point that the psychologist was um keeping them hypnotized, right? Um is it possibly because she tries to use the same hypnotic suggestion as the psychologist and i mean she interprets it as uh she responds but then maybe not so do you think that was a hallucination too the what the psychologist did 
and I, I wouldn't hang my hat on that being a definite thing either. Mm -hmm. that the, the psychologist was definitely doing that, other than you know that was what she perceived their role was from the very start. Again, this preconception uh, coming in that the psychologist was obviously and is now developed into they had different orders than us going going in, you know, and uh, yeah. then that that fell out in some way in her head at the very least. Mm. Yeah, it's quite it's quite different from other books because usually in other books dialogue between characters usually conveys a good amount of information to the reader mm -hmm. where the dialogue between these characters is just making things stranger and not conveying you're not giving us information uh towards the mystery or towards even towards their own characters because you're not even sure if they're acting themselves and uh it's it's different. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I, I was reading like this the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's been a long time since I read a book that way. <laughs> but, um, so do we think the anthropologist is dead for sure? Is that really the anthropologist, the anthropologist footprints? It, there seems to have been a great deal of distortion in the body that they found. Mm-hmm. And mm. and yet maybe apparently did the survey ever look at the body properly, or did she just take the biologist's word for it that it's the anthropologist? Yeah, could it, it could have not been her, or it could have been someone from before. Mm. Could have been a clone. Like there is the suggestion that also the people that have come back from Ariex beforehand aren't actually the people that went in, as well, mm. including her husband. Oh, right. yeah. 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 Did they just lose themselves, lose what made them themselves, or do you think a different person came back? Hmm. That, that, that's <laughs> the question, really, because it seems like a soulless, uh, not person that doesn't connect. The person that they remembered going is not the person that came back, and then they died of cancer, all hmm. of them when they came back. So, reacting to a toxin or something in the normal world, like uh, the whole thing sort of gives off that stink or that smell. Um, Mm. But who, but who knows? Like honestly, like, all things are are very very possible. Mm. So there, there is there. something of them, right? Because they say like, oh, it feels like they can feel something of what they used yeah. to be, just very distant. They're trying to grasp it, right? Yeah. It's not like so it's, it's like, like a completely yeah. different person. It's just yeah. It's just like they're on maybe very far away inside their own psyche or something. I don't know. Yeah, but the, the there's something broken. And yeah. uh, she mentions that in a line. She says, there are certain kinds of connections so deep that when they are broken, you feel the snap of the link inside you. That was yeah, like you, one of her really lines. Right. And uh, so that is probably related to her, her husband and other expeditioners who uh, came before. Mm. Yeah. And I think that scene when he is outside looking at the boat, trying to remember sure. why it's important to him, I, that was a very powerful scene for me. Yeah. Very yeah, and sad. he didn't look. He didn't look back. Was not the key moment where she decided that uh, that she had to basically give him up at that stage, essentially. Mm -hmm. Did it? Yeah. To me, that also felt a bit. Sorry. Go ahead, Marcia. No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dan. No, I was just saying that that uh, sort of made me think of like uh, like sort of degenerative disease, mental diseases and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Like when you, like that person is slowly like it's that same person and there's still some aspects of it, but it's getting further and further away. And you can see them like, for example, trying to grasp who they used to be or like why these people are important to them. But it's just, yeah, it, it just made me think of all that sort of stuff. I don't know if it's intended but mm. Mm. yeah like like you know technically or mechanically like this is supposed to be important or i'm supposed to have feel something for this person but you don't yeah that that was a pretty deep scene yeah. i guess like the brain sort of regresses into itself mm -hmm. right yeah mm. yeah i was i was gonna ask uh did it feel like she gave him up too soon like she only tried for a day <laughs> to see if he'd regain his identity and she justifies it later by saying oh even all the time they kept him under ob observation he didn't 
say much else, but who's to say he wouldn't have recovered better if he had stayed home and not under observation? Yeah, she seems to not have a problem with severing past links. Because mm -hmm. um, uh, she, like she, she mentioned that when she, whenever they, she was recalled from some expedition, even if it was early or something like that, from project, then she would just forget about it, and that was it. And uh, it, so that seemed mm -hmm. to be her personality even before getting shot in the face with spores. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and she seemed to have an interesting relation, like their dynamics seem to be like quite interesting, even before this sort of thing happened, mm. right? Like her being so distant and I don't, it was very interesting also that part, how she was describing their relationship, right? Yeah. Not yeah. very typical, I guess. Yeah, and, and, and even the physical side of the relationship as a biologist, she had kind of decided that the best way to try and connect with them was kind of on a physical level. Uh, and even the words that she just described a couple of times that that happened changed from mm -hmm. one time to doing it to the next. So again, I think it was another kind of, she was trying to feel like a, a more emotional connection that she wasn't getting. And at that point had decided, right, I've done all that I can twice. <laughs> 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 yeah, her her backstory of where she talks about yeah the relationship with her husband. It it was interesting for me to read because I feel like I'm introverted in the same way that she describes herself to be, <laughs> but I feel like I'm such a vastly different person than she is. Like the you know some of the things that she said that. Um, I, I think the one that really stood out to me was, uh, I don't have friends. I inherit them from my husband. <laughs> and like until very recently, all my friends, I can trace back the origins to, you know, the, there was someone my husband used to know. And there were so many other things. I just felt like reading a very twisted version of myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> Has but, anybody seen your husband in the past week? <laughs> <laughs> Just check. Yeah, I have. Did you show up and take him away. <laughs> ah. <laughs> but, uh, are you a reliable narrator? <laughs> <laughs> what, Jared? You don't trust me after all this time? <laughs> Absolutely. 100%. <laughs> Notes. <laughs> like, like the surveyor and the. Uh, Wait, was the surveyor mollifying the biologist? No, the biologist was trying to uh, tiptoe around the surveyor, yeah. apparently. Yeah. 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 I guess the other thing about the husband, too, that she mentions is she's saying, oh, maybe he was also, because some of the stuff he was doing and how he was behaving was due to the, um, what's it called? Hypnosis. Mm -hmm. Maybe he undergoes a certain thing, right? That's right. Mm. You yeah, I wonder think, how much of that is. Yeah. yeah she, I think she was asking for details of his mission and he was refusing to answer or something like that. Or maybe, or oh, refusing to change his mind that mm. he, he thinks he might have been hypnotized. Yeah. Okay. You also wonder what, what seeds were planted with her before the mission to go in. So, had she been influenced prior to going on the mission? And how much is that affecting her thought process now? Hmm. She she does doesn't seem to have undone any of the hypnosis that yeah was <laughs> given to her before the uh, spores, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, mis misdirection seems to be a common theme in mm. this mm -hmm. particular chapter because sure. she she mentioned that there was a willful intent to obscure misdirect before the mission even began, mm -hmm. and then the map itself that they were given is a form of misdirection as well and mm -hmm. uh so that's that seems to be like an overall feeling <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. and, yeah and it just and there was uh, also, sorry go ahead no go ahead go ahead then no i was just gonna ask uh, if you guys noticed that i think she mentioned just one sentence that what we're reading is sort of like her memoirs yeah, which is something mm -hmm. she wrote. So it's like because last time I remember, 
we were saying, oh, well, if we we're reading her account, then it means she's still alive. Well, I guess now we don't know. Is she still, still alive? Wait, yeah. why don't we, we know saying, now? Oh, well, because we know that what we're reading is what she wrote, but maybe it's mm. what she wrote and someone else found it, right? Maybe we're just yeah. reading, we're going to go through like half of it is going to be her perspective and then it's going to zoom out and it's some guy reading her account and then that's the actual story or something. I don't know. But Oh, yeah, that, that would be cool. Because <laughs> they do leave journals behind. I mean, they all, they all have a record that they... Right. retrieve if somebody dies or whatever that it's, yeah. it sounds like it's pretty important for them to to take it with them to turn it in and to document everything so it could be yeah. mm -hmm. she specifically mentioned that they've been you know told keep notes of everything break bring this journal she just she even describes exactly how the journal looks and the pages with the lines and everything so maybe. yeah i think i think she Okay, so I, I guess what this is, it's not a real time journal, it's a retrospective of something that happened. Yes. So something, so this is basically a later time journal, like maybe she's not alive right this moment, but she wrote it at least a few days in to mm -hmm. her expedition, I guess. Yeah. Um, the board didn't make an appearance, and <laughs> but we, since we were talking about the husband not being himself, do you think? Um, well, I don't know. this is really far fetched and silly. But the husband <laughs> is the board, <laughs> or some other previous expedition members are the board. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> 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 hmm. I think about dinner that. time. <laughs> dinner time. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This tastes like my husband. <laughs> <laughs> It seems unlikely that they can keep themselves fed in this area, right? So if the surveyor leaves. So by the way, the anthropologist, did she or did she not take supplies with her? Did she take food and stuff? Or who has that? Because apparently the psychologist raided their camp and took half of presumably what was left okay. after the anthropologist took her share. So the supplies no, I think she made. said. I think she said the anthropology because she asked, oh, all her stuff is still here. And the psychologist oh. said, oh, she didn't bring anything because it's closed and she wanted to leave more stuff for us. Okay. Right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they have half, which is still about what they would have had anyway. Six months. They said they were supplied for six months or three, three years. Yeah. Or something. yeah. But they've only but, been here for like a couple of days. It's right. not been that long. So mm. But I thought didn't did she make a comment about dwindling resources at some point? Mm. I think maybe regarding like bullets or something, maybe? Could it be something else? Maybe not the food? I don't remember. Hmm. Okay. maybe, maybe. Yeah, maybe that's what I, th it was. I, I think there was a comment about if the surveyor and the bell just would have split up again if she wanted to go to the lighthouse and the surveyor wanted to go somewhere else that it, would, mm. it might cause some problems they were sort of like tied to each other be, mm. uh, because mm. of maybe some of that those reasons possibly mm. Mm. makes sense could have been that up though yeah but i mean <laughs> would you guys have i don't know like her decision to split up at the end and go on her own to the lighthouse i'm like i would never have done that <laughs> No. Yeah. I would never have volunteered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, well, we've already seen that she uh, likes to just cut off the pass and go forward. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know. I, I didn't, the, the thing. Yeah. didn't the um, surveyor tell her something like, you like it here better, don't you? Like you, mm. you mm. like being here. Yeah. Yeah, almost twisted. Yes. That she likes yep. it here. Yeah. Yeah, you prefer yeah. this place. You really do. Yeah, and uh, I guess she is, she really likes being in the forest with animals and stuff like that. I don't mm. know. I, but it's I, I don't know if any of you have been in the forest alone in a small tent uh, at night. It's scary as hell. 
Yeah. It's really scary. Even if you know there's nothing to be worried about, you just hear the animals or you're like, you're constantly thinking about what if a cougar is here or, or a wolf or something. It's really scary. I would, well, I guess she's used to it, but much stronger than me. She's got guns. <laughs> Do they work? Yeah. <laughs> Do they work? Well, you know. <laughs> Have they so, used the gun so far? No, right? Uh, didn't they shoot at the boar? Or oh, right. Or, right. Or, yeah. like or, no, I thought the boar turned back before the they... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think you're right. Mm. So, the, the tower slash tunnel slash weirdly breathing creature, <laughs> what do you think is going <laughs> on there? <laughs> yeah, that's... I think that's uh, that was a... Uh, little uh hint of next chapter maybe i don't know <laughs> well, next chapter we're going to the lighthouse <laughs> oh yeah that's right yeah but we are reading two chapters so maybe it's the chapter after the, for next week <laughs> maybe the lighthouse yeah, and the... There's... sorry go ahead mm -hmm. no it's because there's something at the bottom of the tower right also someone writing I guess these things mm, he says. Right. What what could it possibly be? Yeah. Turn back. And, Go no and further. She mentioned a golden halo glowing thingy multiple times. I think some from the walls, some from the anthropologist. And I think the sample that she has, um, that she took from the anthropologist's um, beaker or whatever, that mm -hmm. also was golden in color, I thought. Mm -hmm. And were the spores golden too that she breathed in? I don't remember. I don't remember. But um, so, so she, the sample that she took apparently it looks like human brain tissue. Mm -hmm. So that's just yes. a, so just. So you think the tower is a, giant brain or is it the creature that's writing on the wall is it made of brain <laughs> made of, bra made of <laughs> human brain <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with with small irregularities <laughs> hmm. yeah who knows and know. also i guess I don't know what it it's is. like it's a pretty deep tower because i think they said they, it, they were down for an hour, like by the time they found the anthropologist, which mm. to me was like, this is a long time to keep going down. Right? Mm. Yeah. It doesn't a tower had stairs. Uh, so yeah. why, yeah. how would, yeah, there's a lot of explaining to do here. We, how would a tower be organic if it had stairs? And True. There's, there's a lot of. Uh... Maybe it's a tunnel. <laughs> Yeah. It, it could be <laughs> tower, <damn> it. <laughs> it it could be teeth that are uh just a little gradated, like blown up and then they're the they're was it spiraling at all? Um, yes, I think so. Was it uh, yeah. I'll take your word for it. I think she said it it curves down, mm. I think. Yeah, um there were dimly sparkling, sparkling green vines progressing into the darkness. Mm. So I don't know if I saw this in a cartoon, but I'm thinking of like a fish with a giant circular mouth and then the teeth sort of spiraling inside. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so the land shark. <laughs> the lighthouse is the tail. The lighthouse is the tail. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yes. What do you think the light was on top of the lighthouse? Mm -hmm. the, or the psychologist. The psychologist? Because she was gone mm -hmm. by then, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Or by this new theory, it could be the creature that's writing on the wall. I I, I just think I'm just going to start reading while you uh, talk away. That. <laughs> 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 Don't do all it. The this. All the speculations just uh it's just it's like right here. It's I could much. just find out. <laughs> uh you're not gonna find out by the end of this book. 
all of Shut up, Dan. <laughs> Only Sam <stuff. laughs> A man can dream. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just breaking hopes and dreams since <laughs> whenever you were born. <laughs> That's just all my problems are in these next hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> now there's some science fiction for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I finished this at like 1 30 and i'm well i was happy to be done with my reading for to, for today but i was like oh i could i could have kept stayed up all night finishing this <laughs> but anyway <laughs> two chapters chris that's all you get that's your allowance for next week <laughs> 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 Partial answers, maybe. <laughs> Even more questions, I'll do. I'll, I'll settle for more questions. I want to find out about the hatch and the button and the smoke monster, and then, then we're good. <laughs> <laughs> the numbers. And the numbers, yes, 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 yes. And the enough. numbers. Yeah. The helicopter. <laughs> yeah. I forgot the, the helicopter. Yeah. And the ship. Hmm. I mean, it's, it's quite it's close in, in setup. If you think about the ship lighthouse, you know, it's that's kind of yeah, yeah. Well, the the random four toed statue. I saw that episode yesterday. But yeah. <laughs> oh, that's uh, right. You're doing your rewatch. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're talking about Lost for anyone who's listening <laughs> and <laughs> doesn't know what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. um, what was I saying? Yeah, the the biologist, the pool. I thought it was so beautiful how it was described. Yeah, I, that was cool. I like that. Yeah. 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 Of her home. But again, really... talked about her isolation growing up and the fact that yeah. she didn't have those kind of close um, societal ties that, that I suppose would be considered normal, which mm. is probably why she doesn't mind being by herself. It does create this isolationist kind of person. Yeah. And um, her, her pension, her, like, uh, and the fact that she never went back there. Mm. Like yeah. she, that was it. It was over. It was done. And, uh, mm -hmm. and she never went back and looked yeah. at it. Yeah, and the fact that she also didn't, she said she doesn't, she didn't look up all the information she was interested. She just observed it and tried to deduce it herself, which yeah, makes right. you know yeah. it's a different kind of scientist, I guess. Yeah, which maybe that's why he, he chose, you know that's why she's perfect for this sort of thing, I guess. Yeah, yep. seems very apt. Yeah, absolutely. And oh yeah, one question I had. I think m maybe because of all the gold references um, mm -hmm. was if she will turn into the maybe the human brain creature after mm -hmm. breathing in the spores <laughs> because of how different she's been feeling. Like, I mean, I just found a note mm, that I had written maybe. here, but yeah, like, <laughs> I don't know if she, yeah. <laughs> It seems odd that the spores would help her this much. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like... Yeah, something bad is coming for sure. Yeah. Sorry, Why would the saying? spores make her immune to psychology, right? right. What, what could be the reason? If the spores are pieces of human brain tissue with small irregularities or something to do with that, doesn't it make well, this, sense that they affect her brain? Well, th this is the question I think I was going to ask Steve before he disappeared last week. Is that you've read Entangled Life, haven't you? Right? Yeah. Which is the, the fungi spores kind of thing already. Uh, spores and fungi just have a sense that they want to control. So that's, yes. that's generally their function. Um, so rather than freeing her, it's far more likely, I think I said this last week, that, that it's looking to exert some control or to change her perception rather than mm. free it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But it, and make, sorry, mm. go, ahead. go ahead, Dan. No, I was thinking like the brain tissue is part of that organism because I think she said she looked at the plants and they were yeah. different. That's different. I, what was it? It was smooth. It was like sort of glass or something. It was mm. She couldn't see anything. And one of them was just like normal. I tried to remember. There's three samples, right? Mm. One, oh, there was one from the plants with the spores, one's from the like hand like organisms that lived within, and one from the B 
being that was sliding down the stairs, I guess. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so not the only a, one was like human brain, right? Yeah, the one from the anthropologist sample. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's the creature that's presumably writing on the wall. And those are the spores that the biologist inhaled. I thought the spores were from like their writing, which was had a different sort of mm. biological composition, I guess. But I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It, mm. Yeah. And and she was I guess since we're changing but... No, I was just saying if if it's changing if she's not influenced anymore by the psychologist, the way hypnosis, yeah, it must be doing something to her brain, right? Because mm. that's how you would interpret the psychological cues. So it must be changing it in some way. Right? Yeah. Mm. That that seems to be what makes most sense at the moment. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Lots of mysteries. <laughs> Too many. Yeah. And what do you guys think then also? So what do you do you guys think that the psychologist went to the lighthouse? Is that what happened to her? See the only clue we've been given other than I mean we could speculate that she just took off and went back, but I you know, the, the lighthouse seems to be the only uh I don't know where else yeah. she would have went unless unless something took her out, but I yeah, yeah. something took her. It seems like well the perception is that she had a plan or a set of orders to carry out. Um and so turning right. back seems unlikely because of that. If that's true, if that if that 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 possibly is true. Um so like if they're heading towards the lighthouse, it kind of makes sense that that's where she might be, but also they might find some evidence along the way that that the uh, that she went turned left at the at the the, uh, the crossroads. And um yeah. So, so why not... did she why did she send them down the tunnel and then left? Because because when they found the body, they're like, oh, we're gonna discover that it's me, so I need to leave. Why then not just tell them not to go down the tunnel with the hypnosis, right? She may have known that she doesn't have that our biologist isn't is immune to her hypnosis mm. and she's like mm, bye true. <laughs> also you think she know she noticed the day before but she didn't say anything she was like oh shit, i need to find a moment to run away and that's why she insisted to stay up mm -hmm. instead of going down with them maybe mm. that's maybe yeah. quite possible yeah maybe what, think about that why did you think why why do you think she did presume like did that she took the anthropologist to the tower the previous day. To get a sample of the creature, right? It seems. <laughs> to kill her? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they were coming back yeah. the next day, right? Oh. The anthropologist's job surely is to study other life or other communication with other life. So, like, breaking her off from the group seems logical for them to go down in the psychologist and anthropologist to then interface or something or do that but uh, to exclude everybody seems i think you said it last week Dennis. it's almost like a slicer that they keep on going off one by one and kind of getting broken yeah. off yeah uh bit by bit you know the, we're the start of his team of five four two you know yeah yeah we shall see. We shall see. So do you think it's the psychologist at the top of the tower then? Is that our favorite theory now? I, I, I who knows know. what? It seems too easy. <laughs> to be the psychologist, yeah. At, at the light that she saw at the tower. The lighthouse, sorry. Hmm. Well, that's where she's headed now, right? The biologist, because she yeah. says she's going to the lighthouse now. So, mm -hmm. I so think, Chris uh, is finding out as we speak. We're gonna, we're gonna <laughs> <laughs> keep talking. That's uh, 
that's uh, potentially our next answer right there, next, mm -hmm. next chapter, but we'll see. Yeah. Any other theories or things to highlight? No. Mm -hmm. Good. I think I had some underlined, uh, some terrifying lines, but I don't mm. know. I guess they felt terrifying at the time with all the context. I'm reading that now. And well, I guess there's this one about the husband. Whatever had happened in Area X, he had not come back, not really. So this, all of this in yeah. the <laughs> the state of mind I was in as I was reading this, uh, yeah, there was like big, big terrifying lines. There were a lot of one-liners that really like hurt my brain a little bit. <laughs> it's pretty reminding I mean, me of this is, series, right? yeah, go ahead. Don't go down. Which see, which series does it remind you of? Uh, Prince of Nothing. Mm. Because mm. of the one liners. Those liners that are just kind of mm. there, they're like, whoa. Right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's very, how do I say, powerful writing, sort of. Mm -hmm. Like it feels like the sentences have weight, right? Mm, yeah. yeah. It's not like wasted. There's no wasted space. It's like, okay, well, he's trying to say something in all of these parts, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I can see this being great on a reread. I almost envy you, Dan, but also like I'm glad to be reading it for the first time. <laughs> well, I forgot a lot of his stuff. So yeah. But this is very much I think I agree. Like what you're saying before, it's like a very mood book. Like if it puts you in the mood and while you're reading it and you're imagining it being in the world, a lot of the stuff feels more scary than just saying, oh, you know, that happened. It's like, that's not very scary. Mm -hmm. But the atmosphere that it builds yeah. is very compelling. Um, and I remember, it, especially if you're reading it, like reading it all sort of together or without like a week in between is a pretty intense experience. At least it was for me when I read, because I read all three of them in a row in one afternoon or something. Oh, wow. It was very <laughs> interesting. Yeah, because the vibes are just, the vibes are creepy in general. Yeah. I could see myself reading right. this in like a setting or two. Yeah. Very yeah. easy to read. Very, it's very, um, like you said, it's very efficient. Like there's no wasted time. It's very, yeah. but it's also it's very captivating at the same time, which is hard yeah. to do. Yeah, yeah. it's sure. not very long, to be honest. That's the right. books are not that long. So. Yeah, I think the longest one is 350 pages or something. And I guess the font is pretty, the whole bind up is 500 pages. No, almost yeah. 600. I never realized how short they are because I read them on the ebook reader. And mm. it just feels like for all this, when I think back of it, it's like, oh, all that stuff happens. It's like so much stuff in it. It's, I thought they were longer than that, but yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It just feels that way. Here's, here's another one I liked. For what was a map, but a way of an emphasizing some things and making other things invisible. Mm. That's chilling. <laughs> that even the map could be potentially used or misused to yeah. direct Mis their attention to specific yeah. misdirection yeah <laughs> yeah true um, and i mean maps in general are like the way you draw a map tells you know what are your biases right there's a lot of maps which are sort of i guess as provocative art pieces like oh you take the map and you flip it the other way around it's like what what does it tell you why does it feel weird to you is it because i don't know are we putting why are we putting north at the top right mm -hmm. or put it east or west or put the center in china or india or whatever right it's like all the different perspectives but you know you don't see sometimes your own perspectives when you're writing these maps and emphasizing certain things but it's definitely a thing if you they can be used for propaganda or manipulation or other things just like i said but mm -hmm. very interesting yeah yeah I also like the retrospective she did of all the things that happened just before 
um, like before uh, all the information that was shared with them during their training and how she sort of um, re-evaluated their purpose or what it was hiding from her. Now, again, we don't know how much of that to believe <laughs> because we don't know how much of her of her musings we can believe. So yeah, it'll be interesting if to see if this leads to a conclusion where we're like, okay, these are the things that she said that are true. And these are the other things that are not like if if she comes because it's first person and she <laughs> she comes to a conclusion, I don't know if even that we can believe anything that she concludes. So yeah. And she's been compromised by the spores. So spores are serious business, let me tell you. Yep. <laughs> It's, 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 scary. Scary. it's scary. It's it's freaky. It's the, there's some weird shit that they do. <laughs> <laughs> the two veterans of maybe we're world. gonna yeah maybe we're gonna do like uh, what's that fungus that grows in the insects and then makes them like like it's zombies like and what's controls. it called cordyceps yeah for something example, fungus it, it makes them uh, it like controls them and then they walk to certain points that overlook so they can spread spores yeah. And they they control ants. <laughs> yeah, I could believe that that's what's happening here. Uh, maybe they, they to control. They're sending her to a lighthouse so she can go to the top and spread more mm. spores. Mm -hmm, that's true. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And if it's spread by yeah. breathing, the surveyor is going to be infected soon. That's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not terrifying. Nope. 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 <laughs> Yeah, it's like a disease, right? Yeah, it feels yeah. like it. Yeah. Cool. Any other closing thoughts about this before we move on to um, 72 letters? No, I'm, <laughs> I'm good. Just excited to keep going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very excited. The yeah, alarm. It's a lot of fun. Yep. Yeah. For, for anyone following along with us, we're reading chapters three and four next week. And five. <laughs> <laughs> Two chapters, Chris. Two chapters. <laughs> and and the short story that we'll read next week is Hell is the Absence of God. Yes, that's that's what it's called. Hell is the Absence yep. of God. Um an interesting title. I wonder what it talks about. Yeah. Probably about neither hell nor God. <laughs> <laughs> And um, some bad maths, probably. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Ooh, so Chris is uh, annoyed about uh, 72 letters, I think. <laughs> you dropped some hints about how you feel yeah. about it. Oh, <laughs> how, God. How do the rest of you feel? I didn't mind it. I thought it was... Uh... Once again, this is... Like most of the stories in this book, it's it's, it falls into that category of it's okay. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It's not bad. You know, it's not like, a, like I think uh, Annihilation is far more interesting <laughs> and a lot more fun to read. Uh, these are interesting little. This actually was quite a long short story, but um, yeah. but it was it was it was interesting. It was I like the historical angle. I like the alternate history angle mm. of it um and uh you know i like uh, I've, I've always been fascinated with the uh the idea of the creation of golems and homunculus and um and so that was fascinating but i thought it could have been 30 pages shorter <laughs> uh, i mean it was a 70 page short story mm. i mean uh oh i see in my book, I think it's 50, but yeah, 50 is still a lot. Yeah. What What did you think, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> is this a, a like a, 60, a 60. name for Stephen King? Because this <laughs> this is a novella. This is printed as a novella on the on release. This isn't a oh. short story. And 
This thing could have been like 20 pages long. Mm. I, I, I just, I don't dry with his writing style at all. I just, I just, I just can't get into it. I'm sorry. I just can't. I just, I don't, I just can't engage with it. I just, I find myself like dozing off. <laughs> I, really, I'm just like, I, I just, I just, I, I don't know. It's just not for me. It's one of the, it's the classic reviewer thing where it's like, you don't really, you really don't like something. It's like, I just not for me. Um, I, I just, I just couldn't engage with it. I just, I just didn't care. <laughs> it was a struggle to get through. It really was. And I just, I just could not, I could not get in. I just could not get into it. I'm sorry. I feel like I'm <laughs> blanket every week. No. Um. We'll find a short story collection that, with stories that you can mm. like. It, I actually, I've been thinking about this this week. Um, I, I know I've been going back and forth on whether or not I like the short stories. I've been changing my mind sometimes about the previous ones that we read and so on. But I think overall I decided that I like this collection, maybe even really like it. Because, and, and I like the story. I enjoyed it quite a lot. Because I think that sci-fi stories for me, or at least the reason why I like to read them, are for the thought experiment or like the questions that they ask portion of it, right? And I feel like this book is full of stories exploring some really interesting questions. Now, I don't always agree <laughs> with the answers or I feel like there are incompletenesses in his answers that I'm not too happy with. But the fact that every single one makes me engage with it mentally, like even if it's just to argue and say, no, you're wrong about this, I think is is a good thing like that that's kind of what sci-fi stories should do in my opinion or at least some <laughs> stories written for that purpose for the purpose of exploring questions i think short stories tend to be um so yeah i i really enjoyed this one and yes i agree that he could have conveyed the whole thing in far less but this also feels like a more complete story than the others in that it's not just exploring the idea itself on a technical level it's looking at the societal implications of uh what could happen if this were true and it has this sense of um it feels like it, it's sort of on the edge that it feels like it maps to something in our world i compare it to programming to math and um i don't know maybe physics but not really um and it's what was I saying? Yeah, so it's like, you know, important scientific discoveries. They have the naysayers, they have the people who complain that you're taking away our jobs, and they have the people who are going to misuse it. And then you have the scientists who are just like focused on uh, what they are doing. And, and I'm sure there are other things that maybe weren't represented here, but each of those got a representation. And we, um, as a sort of like an expanded thought experiment, like it didn't go anywhere. There weren't characters that, once again, I didn't care much for the characters, but just on the thought experiment level, I thought this was a really cool story and yeah. explore some really interesting concepts. So well, one of the <laughs> one of the concepts was the premise that not correct me if I get this wrong, but the premise that the human race is going to eventually become sterile and right. kind of just die out in there. The, they're uh, coming to the conclusion that they're trying to do this in order with the with the you know the the uh, golems. They're trying to create a way for the golems to reproduce on their own as an experiment to find out if they can also use these words, this you know these these magical words or whatever they are. Um, well, super science words that look like magic. Uh, that uh, <laughs> um, on humans in order to get humans to reproduce in a different way in order to keep the human race going. So that's, am I correct in that kind of roundabout assumption of the whole premise? That's okay. correct, yeah. All right, all right. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so, I and, I and I think I read in the back, you know, his notes that this was, an idea that made some rounds briefly 
among some mm. science fiction writers and now it's of course it's been thrown out the window nowadays yeah. but at the time he wrote it it was kind of a it was kind of a hot topic mm. um and uh and so that's that's interesting but i actually found the alternate history more interesting than that part of it myself <laughs> but uh <laughs> Like I, th I think the idea is fine, but mm -hmm. as in every goddamn story in this book, he then goes to say, and there's five left. For all generations, all families, all the rest. And I'm just like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. We tested two families and they both had five mm -hmm. left. So therefore the human um human lifespan is five generations. And I was like, humans have been on this planet for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Even a small discrepancy in standard of living would have changed these numbers massively. Mm. And I was just like, why do you even do it? Like, why even put a number on it? Like, the idea as the concept is a good one to explore. <laughs> Come but on, he was, he was generalizing, Chris. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but but it, I'll tell you, it also made the previous 25 pages null and void. I, I sort of agree with Steve in this one. The first 25 pages were almost unreadable. Uh, mm. With the amount of jargon that, that that was in it, and the the kind of ideas of the naming making things influence, which is essentially what they were saying was programming, essentially using these different combinations of seventy letters to program the, the things. But that whole thing, I, I had to read that thing two or three times to go. I missed something. I have missed something. Communication here, and then just kind of went, no, I'm going to interpret this. Decide to interpret it in this way, and kind of go with it. So that the story got to a point that it did, as in all the other stories, got to the point. I went, this is quite interesting at this stage. So that then how, you know, the people signed up to the different modes of scientific thinking. That was good. Uh, some people wanted to do it for altruism. Some people wanted to do it for the benefit. Some people wanted to do it for control. All that stuff. And then he flipped it and changed it to something else. <laughs> Just, like, if I... If I I've never even thought about doing this, but I nearly DNF'd this about three or four times. <laughs> like it was, it was tough in some places, and especially around that 25, 30 page mark. I was like, what is even a, a bit like you were saying, Marcia, I couldn't even get what he was, what his idea was at that stage. You know, it wasn't obvious what he was trying to explore or play with at that stage. Mm. Uh, and I did get good, I did enjoy the end of it, and like he did inject a bit of action towards the end, which made the kind of end very compelling. I remember kind of getting through the last 10 pages and went, oh, that just flew by kind of thing. Mm. But by that stage, it was like, okay, this has changed the goalpost so many times. Mm. So it frustrated me. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I, I agree. I think the ideas are, I think the ideas are cool. I think there's some themes that he's playing with that I really like. I just think, just get like if it's a if you want to really draw this up like write a novel like spread it out like expand it i think he gets so caught up in like all this bs jargon and like all this like it, it's like you're talking to someone who's who's trying to like impress you with their vocabulary all the time to make them feel like smarter than like they really are and it's like just just get to the damn point like just let's just get on with it like let's tell me the story this is, this is like i don't know i just I, I had a really tough time with this one. <laughs> and it, the more stories we get through, the more impressed I am with the movie Arrival. Because what they did with that story, I mean, I'm, yeah, it, it's... A little away, yeah. 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 So I, I, don't, I don't mean I don't, Debbie Downer again, but... Oh, no. I, I think... <laughs> I think I do agree with you on that. Like I, I talked about how I thought this was a more complete story than the others, but also in many ways it was incomplete and in that like all the things that he ended up exploring in like the societal aspects of the scientific theory. Um, I think those would probably have worked much better in a full fledged novel. Like this was a short story trying to be a novel a novel masquerading as a short story like one of those i don't know but um yeah i do agree with you on that like there were a lot of branches that were laid out but but it also felt like just a sketch of a thought experiment you know like i could you could read it both ways and yeah. it you have to <laughs> if 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 the if you don't see the relevance of the other stuff or if it feels like, yeah, yeah I, I got it already or whatever, or this was not necessary to explore, I can see how that might bog you down. Uh, yeah. 
especially because I read it directly after Annihilation, which, mm. you know, each page just has loads oh. of ideas, loads of things just floated out there. And I'm, I'm trying to wade through something d- like directly after reading it. And I'm like, I just want to go back and read Annihilation. <laughs> Chris, uh, Chris, eat your meat and potatoes before your dessert. Okay, yeah, come that's on. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Rookie mistake, Chris. I read this before I read Annihilation. <laughs> ah. I did the same thing. I was like, because you get like this, you i was so impressed with annihilation i just i wanted to keep going and then i, I jump into this one okay let me and then it's like you go from like flying to like mm, <laughs> like what <laughs> what yeah it, I'll, I'll give a good a good example of it it'd be like if analysis was written and they just kept on going about the, whether it was a tar or a tunnel as if that was really important in, in the story you know rather than kind of alluding to the fact that it's that it's a point of contention but it actually isn't that important it's kind of like yeah. a philosophical thing rather than that whereas you know the ted chime books definitely feel like they really have to hammer home uh the, some of the ideas that are in there to their full extent before they can move on yeah, yeah. I it almost feels like we need a third category. Maybe there is one already, but we will create a third category, not plot driven or character driven. This is more like philosophy <laughs> driven, and that's it. Like it's that's the the whole thing centers mm-hmm. around the philosophical aspects of it, to the almost to the detriment of the characters and maybe even the story. I don't know. But I liked it, like for all that. <laughs> uh, I, That's cool. Yeah. Well, sometimes I, less is more. Yeah. I, I thought it was better than Tower of Babylon. And mm-hmm. I thought it was. Oh. I liked it better than than Understand. Um, but uh, that you know, it, it's, it was okay. <laughs> I was gonna say this feels like faint praise to all the same. I liked it better than maybe mm, I don't know. Uh... I, I liked a bit of the root canal. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean harsh, but it's just, uh, it's rough. Oh hmm. god! Yeah, I like Division by Zero better than this one because Division by Zero was straight straight to the point and done. Yeah, yeah. and. uh but um yeah yeah i did um yeah go ahead go ahead sorry as, as, I sort of agree with Warsh in some ways because I think if I look back in this this collection of stories about two or three years down the line, I will remember just the kind of clip notes of a lot of the stories and the kind of ideas of them. And I'd probably think back quite fondly on the story collection, if that makes sense, in that regard, because it it, it does have some interesting ideas. Uh, the whole way through it. Each story has at least a, a, a kernel or a nugget of something that, that is like, right, okay, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a, that's an interesting way to approach that or approach that problem with that technology or something like that. So, mm. but my, uh, yeah. You know, know it's kind of like what, what Steve was saying. It's like, I think he would have been better served as a novel. Uh, this, this one because, definitely would have. Because I think he could have then explored the whole society you know, around London and around and in the rest of Europe um, with the ramifications of how this this science, this naming, changed society to be different than what we know today. And he only just barely hinted at it. And uh, it, it could have been so much more interesting on that level, you know. And, um, yeah, it, but he didn't go there. He... Uh, he stopped there, and he, and he, uh, and, he and like Chris said, he had, it had a you know a exciting finish, a little bit of action there, yeah. you know, and uh, you know mm-hmm. spy work and what have you, assassination yeah. types, uh, you know. So that was that made the end. You're like, oh, okay, cool ending, and okay. uh, and you know you, you can forget about the thirty first thirty pages. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it it did feel like, I mean, I like that it all came together in the end, sort of, that the fact that he's working for, um, that he wants to create the automaton is what sent the assassin, so that, but it almost feels like those were placed to make the story come together rather than like happening organically, like the, it it feels like we're reading disconnected threads, right? First, you're trying to save the human race, but we also have the uh, automaton to um, 
improve society and he wants to bring the two together but he's working on them independently and one research and one is helping the other sure but they don't seem relevant to each other at least from the story point of view but then it all comes together with the assassin and the cabalist and so on but like that I, I have to say that whole discussion about when they were trying to control the classes and then control reproduction and then how his other project was actually going to help the poor. I thought that bit was absolutely a brilliant idea. Again, yeah. And again, it started to go down it and it was like, oh, but we'll, we'll come back to that later. And it's like, mm. all right, okay. Like, uh, I, I get the idea that you kind of posed those questions and I, and I really love that idea that it, that it really should have created a bit more conflict. Other than mm. the guy who was going to be his problem became a savior kind of thing. It all kind of was a bit too nice in the end, yeah. uh, if that makes sense. Uh, but that idea was was fantastic. And again, in a full novel, that could have been yeah, right. Really, really something made of it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. This this reads like a sketch or an outline for a novel more than I, I don't know what this looked like, but maybe yeah. this is this is what they look like. <laughs> Depends on the author, I suppose. Yeah. But yeah, I, I I did think that it touched upon some very important points, like the one that you just talked about, Chris, with the with the person who wants control. And yeah, when he did when he signed up to work with him, I was like, what do you know about this guy that you're agreeing with in one conversation? You don't even you didn't even know he existed until yesterday, right? It wasn't some well known person calling him in. It was, hey, I'm rich and I'm doing this research. Do you want to join me? <laughs> um, That's all I need. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're rich. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and and yeah, like that. That's not at all going to. We haven't seen a, so so many superhero movies where that you know went downhill. Right. <laughs> okay. <That's true>. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah. So. Yeah, but like with all the others, I I was arguing with it, but also the next day I was thinking about it. I was like, yeah. oh, it, it does raise all these important points. And I guess that's the other thing about sci-fi stories, right? They tend to um, make you, let you do the thinking. It's just posing the questions and yeah. and you're sort of working out the answers and thinking about alternatives and whatnot it's when the answer is prescribed like in some of the cases that are like no you are you are implying free will doesn't exist but um those bother me but mostly it's here come up with your own answers but oh and the other thing i liked was well not liked per se but i guess the other sort of commentary may be intentional that this story i thought was making was that the scientific basis or the mechanical basis for the world it's completely different from ours but he created a situation where it has all of the same social problems that our world does yeah which is interesting like it's converging on the same things um i mean it, it i don't think he's making a statement that this is how it will be but sort yeah. of analyzing our social problems in the context of this other world which again you know tends to create that distance that fantasy and sci-fi stories tend to which let you think about them differently but yeah was anybody else expecting a little mention of you know in the past it was just dr frankenstein you know making <laughs> make, making that column you know? i was i was waiting for it and it never came and i was like ah <laughs> Well, now that would have been cool, wouldn't it? <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I I am surprised that this was this got some of the strongest reactions in the group because I thought the whole bit with the assassination and the uh, action in the end <laughs> would be a redeeming factor for the story. But I suppose the thirty pages that went ahead, <laughs> it wasn't enough to make the thirty pages that went ahead. Go away, yeah. They the also the the bit where he used the uh, the let's call him the golem because that's supposed to keep the door closed. <laughs> <laughs> just read to me like a glitch in a video game, you know, where somebody's yeah. trying to open a door and something's just blocking the way and it just can't get out of the glitch. You know, <laughs> I, he's trying to push it and then it just kind of glitches back into place. And I was like, this is sort of hilarious. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah <laughs> and i did love that call back to his childhood memory right like he spent this entire section talking about like yeah maybe do- documenting him as a little bit of a prodigy but really what he's telling us is you know this is how he used to play with his toys and he used that <laughs> to get himself out of this situation <laughs> that's fun Oh dear. Just provoke it. Yeah. 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 Cool. So any other closing thoughts? For... I just want to say anybody listening, do not listen to anything I say because I'm an idiot. So don't <laughs> <laughs> Well, don't listen to that either because I don't agree that he yes, is. No, none of us agree with that. <laughs> I'm, I have the spores and I'm contagious, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so next week we'll be reading Hell is the Absence of God, and of course we'll be continuing with Annihilation. We're reading chapters three and four. No, Chris, you can't read chapter five. (laughs) uh, We'll meet again in about a week, and we will see you then. Thank you so much for listening. Bye.